During Tesla's recent Q3 2020 investors conference call, there were two specific hints given that support my theory that the Tesla Cybertruck with Tesla's new 4680 battery cells will be able to charge faster than any other Tesla currently on the road. Let's dive into the details and see why this is very likely. I'm Jonathan and welcome to CleanerWatt. When it comes to talking about the charging speed of an electric vehicle, an EV, there are really a few different aspects that are important to focus on. One of them is that max charge rate measured in kilowatts. How many kilowatts can that battery accept while charging at the max rate? And then while that max rate is important, more importantly is kind of the average sustained rate. What is the average rate of kilowatts that are accepted in that battery pack during that charging session? That actually affects the charging time more because yes, you might have a very high max charge rate, but that max charge rate is really only achieved at one little small section of the battery charging. After that, it tapers down near the end of the charge to protect the battery. Another big key is how efficient the electric vehicle is. And efficiency is really important because this actually translates to the real world performance that charging gives you. How many miles of range do you actually add to the vehicle per minute of charging? That's what really matters because yes, you might have a very high charge rate and yes, you might be able to fill that battery up very quickly, but if you're filling a battery for a very inefficient EV, you're not actually adding very many miles. And so we're gonna dive into some of those aspects, but specifically, I wanna spend the most time on those first two aspects and that max charge rate. I wanna talk about why I believe the Cybertruck's batteries, which will of course be the 4680, Tesla's new tabless batteries, why those batteries, based on what I know and what Tesla has said, why those batteries will charge very quickly. During Tesla's Q3 2020 conference call that just happened, Jerome Guillen actually said something that might have been a slip, but it might not have been. I believe he might have actually said that Tesla is working on 350 kilowatt chargers for future cars. Could this be version four of Tesla's superchargers? Yeah, we continue the development of the semi, and uh, uh, in particular, mega chargers. We, we realized that the 350 uh, kilowatt or, or or so that uh, we might be looking for cars is not going to be enough for semi. So we're looking for something much more uh, powerful than that. And so I believe it's very possible that Jerome accidentally leaked out that they're working on 350 kilowatt chargers for their new vehicles like the Cybertruck and any new vehicle that will get these new 4680 cells. I believe this is what version four of Tesla's superchargers are going to be. They're going to be 350 kilowatt chargers. Based on what we know so far about these new large 4680 Tesla tabless battery cells, we know because of their power dense architecture that they will be able to accept a higher charge rate than Tesla's current 18650 batteries found in the Model S and Model X and Tesla's 2170 battery cells found in the Model 3. So just the architecture itself is going to lend itself to a higher charge rate. However, there are other issues that we need to concern ourselves with, and there are other factors that affect the charge rate. Near the beginning of the question section of the Q3 2020 Tesla Investor Conference call, there was a question asked about whether the 4680 battery cells would charge faster on a supercharger. And Drew Baglino, which is the VP of tech at Tesla, answered this question. And while he kind of downplayed the fact that these new batteries might charge faster, I believe he gave us some hints that we can use and put together with other things that we know about what Tesla is working on, and I believe we can paint a very clear picture that these new battery cells will charge quicker. Here is Drew on the Q3 2020 conference call. The fundamental limitation on charge rate and lithium ion batteries is avoiding lithium plating on the anode. Um, and while the tablet's architecture helps avoid uh, overheating because it's a, a more power dense architecture uh, at high continuous charge rates, it, it doesn't change the anode plating story. Uh, electro design and anode material choice more directly determines the maximum charge rate and how to avoid that lithium plating problem. 
So let's dive into what Drew said, and I want to show how I believe he actually gave some hints to why these batteries will charge quicker when you compare this with revelations that we learned at Battery Day. So as you heard, Drew confirmed that this new 4680 battery cell has a very power-dense architecture. However, it does not change the anode plating story, and we'll dive into what that means, the anode plating, what this lithium plating means, and what it means to the life of a battery, and how supercharging affects that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But he also said here specifically, what's more important in their particular case here for the 4680 battery cells is actually limiting the lithium plating problem with a lithium ion battery. His exact quote was, the electrode design and anode material choice more directly determines the maximum charge rate and how to avoid that lithium plating problem. And so we need to really focus on the electrode design and then we also need to focus on the plating problem because it's already obvious this new battery cell architecture is more power dense and because this new tablet's design solves the heat problem, we don't need to focus on that now. That side's already taken care of. Just the architecture of the battery itself already lends itself to a higher charge rate, but we need to focus on the other limiting factors, and that is the electrode design and also limiting the plating of the anode, the lithium plating of the anode. So let's dive into those aspects and let's talk about how Tesla's new battery tech that they're working on is actually going to solve those two problems. And I believe we'll see this new battery tech come out in time for the Cybertruck. According to the research I've done, lithium plating in the anode of a battery occurs when the charge rate of a lithium ion battery exceeds the rate at which the lithium ions can be transferred into the anode material. Yes, heat can be a problem and that can degrade the battery with fast charging, but they've solved that problem. The main issue here is limiting the plating of the anode, that lithium plating of the anode. And supercharging at too high of a rate can actually cause more of this lithium plating. Now before I dive into some of the clues of how Tesla's new battery technology might limit this lithium plating and extend the life and allow Tesla to charge these batteries at a higher rate, I just want to briefly cover what this lithium plating of the anode is and why it does damage a battery. Lithium plating on the anode leads to capacity loss in a battery and can develop what's called fingers or dendrites which can eventually short circuit the battery and cause complete battery failure. These fingers or dendrites actually form from this lithium plating on the anode and both are bad. The plating itself actually leads to a degrading of the capacity of the battery. Then of course those fingers or dendrites can actually lead to a complete battery failure altogether. But how do we limit this lithium plating and how does Tesla's new battery technology limit this? Notice that Drew clearly pointed out two limiting factors that Tesla is working on solving for faster charging of their batteries. He talked about the electrode design and then he also talked about the limiting of the lithium plating of the anode. Now when you use the term electrode, that's a term that describes the anode and the cathode. Those are the two electrodes found in a lithium ion battery. And as you know, as I've talked about, as a lot of other people have talked about, Tesla somewhat recently purchased Maxwell Technologies and they use a dry process to coat the electrodes and it's not only much faster and not only is it much cheaper to manufacture these batteries, but I believe from some research that I pulled up that it actually helps with battery life and limiting some of this plating of the anode. I believe this is the electrode design, at least part of it, what Drew was talking about. The electrode design or the dry battery electrode technology that they're implementing could actually help Tesla's batteries not only last longer, but last longer under high charge rates. So earlier when we played that quote from Drew about the uh, charging of the 4680 battery cells, we already covered the electro design and we covered the fact that that can help affect the plating story. But he also mentioned that the anode material choice is really important as well. 
If you are paying attention at all at battery day, Tesla made a really big deal about using silicon in the anode and they mainly focused on it because of a price reduction and because of the fact that it does actually increase the energy density of the battery cells itself. But what they did not mention is that based on the research I've done, I believe that silicon in the anode can actually affect the charge rate as well. During battery day, Tesla put up this slide which said that silicon stores nine times more lithium than graphite. And while the focus of that statement was mainly about the energy density of the cell, because if the anode can store more lithium, it can have a more energy dense architecture. But when you're charging a battery, this also comes into play based on some research that I've done. I found an article on engineering.com that talked about how silicon might actually be the answer to faster charging batteries. Quote, Innovate's researchers have started using an engineered porous pure silicon film. That article went on to say, as it does not require high quality silicon, these anodes are more cost effective than those with graphite elements. In addition, lithium ions slip in and out quicker in the silicon anode, charging the battery to 75% of its capacity in five minutes. Now having a pure lithium anode of course has a lot of problems and Tesla is not specifically doing that right now, but they are working on adding more silicon to the anode and by adding more silicon to the anode based on this research and based on what I've uncovered here, this means that their batteries should be able to charge at a faster rate. This should actually be what Drew was talking about, electrode design and electrode material choice. The form factor does make a difference, but more importantly, Tesla has the answers for the electrode, dry battery electrode processes, and also adding more silicon to the anode. These will lead to a battery, the 4680 battery cells found in the Cybertruck to be very fast charging batteries. Maybe not charging in five minutes, but maybe 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Maybe they'll charge twice as fast as Tesla's current battery tech. So at the beginning of the video, I talked about how important efficiency also mattered when it comes to charging rate, what really matters, how many miles you're adding per minute of charging. And that is super important. And I wanna say that even if I'm completely wrong, and even if these new 4680 battery cells don't charge any faster than the current battery tech found in the Model 3 and the Model Y, that the, the Cybertruck will still actually charge faster than the competition because Tesla's vehicles are much more efficient. To illustrate this, let's look at a chart showing the Model 3 charging times and how many miles are added per minute and the Porsche Taycan charging times, how many miles are added per minute. According to evdatabase.org, the Model 3 long range all wheel drive can charge from a 10% state of charge to an 80% state of charge at a Tesla V3 supercharger in around 22 minutes. If you connect the Taycan Turbo S to a 350 kilowatt charger like Electrify America or Ionity, you can go from a 10% state of charge to an 80% state of charge in around 20 minutes. Now if you stopped right there and just looked at the time, you would say yes, the Porsche Taycan can actually charge faster. But because of the lack of efficiency, the Taycan during that period of time only adds 134.4 miles, whereas the Model 3 can add over 240 miles of range during that same period of time. When it comes to how many miles are actually being added per minute of charging, the Model 3 is almost twice the miles being added per minute of charging. So because of this, and some of the things we know about the Cybertruck, it's designed being very efficient, very aerodynamic, I believe compared to other vehicles like the Hummer, the GMC Hummer EV truck, which is very inefficient, I believe as compared to that, the, the Cybertruck will be very efficient, and in its class, it may be the most efficient truck. Thus, even if it has the same charge rate, and I'm completely wrong about the battery tech, it still will charge faster when it comes to miles per minute than the competition. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking that like button so that other people can find the video as well. And also, I wanted to make sure and thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help me make these videos and bring this content out for you. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community that I've set up, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.